take her namesake from Greek mythology, Electra, the Marvel Comics super vixen, seeks vengeance for a murdered father. Remember me? Electra was the girlfriend of the blind superhero Daredevil, but things didn't exactly work out. I didn't kill your father. Liar. She has so much rage in her life. Electra chooses darkness with the same kind of single-mindedness that and discipline that she has grown up putting towards becoming a martial artist. Created in 1981, this ninja assassin was the invention of writer and artist Frank Miller. Miller killed Electra off after 16 issues, but within a year, she was brought back to life by a group of mystics. There's all this sexual tension between Electra and Daredevil. It's been going on for years. A friend of mine says, well, how come he never sees it? And I'm like, well, he's blind. With her sexy get up and take no prisoners attitude, Electra is the ultimate bad girl with a heart of gold. Oh gosh, Electra. You go, Jennifer. Steal the movie from the guys, girl. I'm not a good person to get involved with. The Avengers. There's just nothing like them. At number 15, a 1960s super spy who combined leather and sexual liberation. A karate-chopping, rose-sniffing Avenger named Mrs. Emma Peel. When I was growing up, the Avengers was on every afternoon, and Emma Peel, Diana Rigg in that leather catsuit, good God. In 1965, the producers of the hit tongue-in-cheek spy series, The Avengers, needed a new leading lady to join Patrick McNee, AKA Special Agent John Steed. They were looking for a woman to play the part who had, uh, who would appeal to men. So someone had written M Appeal, and that became her name. Enter actress Diana Rigg, who leaped from the London stage to pop culture fame on the small screen. With a new star and a flashy new opening sequence, The Avengers was bigger than ever. Steed and Peel, a marvelous match for any foe. Mrs. Peel was TV's first real dominatrix, a woman who brought bondage and tight leather into living rooms at a time when most women on television were serving pie. Although she was later played in the 1998 movie by Uma Thurman, it was Diana Rigg who made Mrs. Peel truly immortal. They'd kick ass and then they'd sip tea and, you know, have a little private joke. Paul is very hospitable. Especially if you're fair, female, and quite beautiful. You're quite pretty yourself. Austin, we've got to look for Dr. Evil. In the tradition of the Avengers, the Austin Powers movie series showcased four of Hollywood's hottest actresses Judy, shut up! with a kind of appeal that even Mrs. Peel would envy. What do you think of these, my man? Any of these ladies might have made it on the list of super vixens, but the one who ultimately landed on top was Felicity Shagwell, the Randy secret agent played by Heather Graham in Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. This is Shagwell, CIA. Shagwell by name, Shag very well, by reputation. Oh, behave. <laughs> Not if I can help it. <laughs> Felicity Shagwell is like every spy's girlfriend. She's got the white bikini from Dr. No. She's got all the swinging London blow-up Antonioni dresses. She's like the whole costume rack on one hot body. How do you get into those pants, baby? You can start by buying me a drink. Felicity Shagwell ranks right up there because of her commitment to getting the job done, especially with Fat Bastard. You can have me for even longer if you want. You're one groovy baby. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. Unlike the last super vixens on the list, Storm doesn't have much of a sense of humor. But when you can toss lightning like Zeus, who needs jokes? Storm is originally from Kenya, 
And what her special mutation is, is that she can control the weather with her mind. Storm is a hero, she's noble, and uh, I just think she happens to be very sexy. You sure you're on the right side? At least I've chosen a side. Raised in Egypt, Aurora Monroe, a.k.a. Storm, was added to the X-Men team by writers Len Wine and artist Dave Cockrum in 1975. I have been hearing that she's pretty popular with the fans. Hang on to something. Well, Storm is one of the, one of the few African-American iconic female heroes. Her background is almost a regal one, and she has this, this incredible sort of Mother Earth kind of power so she can control the weather around her. And the nice thing is, is, you know, if you ever went on a picnic with Storm, you could pretty much guarantee the weather. It's mercy, compassion, and forgiveness I lack. Making the cut at number 12 is a character created by filmmaker Quentin Tarantino and actress Uma Thurman. The two-part feature Kill Bill introduced a figure known simply as The Bride. An assassin who tries to go straight, survives an attack by her ex-lover during a wedding rehearsal, and sets out on a mission of revenge and redemption. You felt like my character was sort of going through this giant struggle, this long saga. It was broken down into these kind of events, like now I've struggled through the House of the Leaves, now I'm taking care of Vivica, I've battled Daryl. <laughs> She's single-minded, ultra-violent, and, and does whatever it takes to get the job done. And since she's trained with these chi masters, she can run up walls and that kind of thing. She even wears a costume, that yellow single-piece jumpsuit with the black stripes. The symbolism is that this is a superhero costume or a supervillain costume, however you want to interpret her. Thurman and Tarantino created the ultimate killing machine, a modern-day super vixen melded with the ancient myth of the woman warrior. My mom said, baby, they should send her over to Iraq because that girl was whooping a whole bunch of booty, including yours. I have never seen somebody whoop that much ass. This is what you got. Go home to your mother. Just ahead, the competition gets tougher as a bionic babe battles a forceful space princess when ultimate super vixens returns.